of those verses, but folks, it doesn't do any good to breathe fire under water. Probably the critter could go on land or water. A lot of animals do that. I would bet if you were 24 feet tall, weighed about 15 tons, had a head the size of a Volkswagen, and you could breathe fire, you could go wherever you wanted. Right? So I think he could go on land or water. Next verse says, He maketh the path to shine after him. One would think the deep to be hoary. Upon earth there is not his like who is made without fear. He's not afraid of anything. You don't need to be when you're that big. Right? He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. Chapter 42. Job answered the Lord. Finally, Job's going to say something. It's been four chapters. God asked Job 84 questions, showed him behemoth and leviathan, and God is done talking. Last thing God said was this verse right here. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. God's done. Conversation over, Job. Why did God leave Job with that thought right there? I think it's because this is the problem Job had all along. Job was a good, godly man, but he was proud. Same problem a lot of us have, folks. Maybe you're good, maybe you're smart, maybe you're rich, maybe you're proud. God hates pride. The Bible talks a lot about that. In the book of Ezekiel, it tells us the four things that cause pride. This is dealing with Satan in this passage. The devil is saying, well, the Lord is talking about the devil. He said, thou hast said, thy heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a god. I sit in the seat of God. Ooh, this guy's got some power. First thing that causes pride is power. People in a position of power often get proud. This is me a couple years ago before I got sick. <laughs> uh, actually not, but uh, have you ever noticed the bodybuilders? It looks like they walk around like this, you know, like they picked up the hairspray instead of the deodorant. I taught school 15 years, man. You always get the football players. They come sit down in class, and they got their sleeve rolled up five or six notches, you know. And they sit down there and say, uh, Teacher, I got a question. <laughs> no, you don't. Man, you're just trying to flex and show everybody. Now, there's nothing wrong with power. Nothing wrong with muscles. But there's something wrong with pride. See, if God gave you big muscles, yay, wonderful. Don't get proud and haughty and cocky about it. Use them for the Lord. I remember we had a guy in our church in Texas named Darrell Bowie. He was the Texas powerlift champion. 740 pounds in the powerlift he lifted. Darrell, Darrell was a friend, of, a friend of mine. I make friends with people like that. I performed a wedding when he and his wife got married. He was a black guy, went to our church in Texas. I ran the chapel in Tyler, Texas. We had about 300 black kids that came to church every Sunday afternoon. We drove the bus over there, picked them up, brought them to the gymnasium and had church services for them. And so I did that for years in Tyler, Texas. And I said, Darrell, hey, since you're black and I'm white and these kids are all black, you'd be a good role model. Why don't you come and do some weightlifting and uh, share your testimony? He said, that'd be great, but I hope and I'd be glad to. He said, you get all the weights you can find in the school, bring them into the gym, and I'll come lift some weights and share my testimony. So we worked and passed out flyers, and it was a big bus promotion. You know, Darrell Bowie, Texas powerlift champion, coming to the Tyler gym. And we had the place packed full of kids that day. Darrell walked in with his suit kind of stretched over all them big muscles, you know. And he walked over and said, Brother Hoven, how much did you get? I said, Darrell, we got all the weights out of the high school. We got 390 pounds. He said, 390? Is that all? I said, is that all? What do you mean, is that all? It took 10 of us to carry it in here. He said, well, put it on. I said, put all of it on the bar at one time? Want to break something? He said, no, man, I won't need to take my suit coat off for this. He laid down and bench pressed 390, 20 times, like it was a toy. Just... He jumped up off the bench and those kids went. And then he said, all right, how many of you would like to see Brother Hoven do this? Of course, you know what the kid said. Yay, let's go, Brother Hoven. Well, I couldn't disappoint him. I laid down and did it 30 times. Actually, I did lay down. <laughs> and I pushed on that bar hard. I don't think the bar knew I was pushing on it. Because I couldn't get it up off the yoke. 
If I would have, it would have killed me on the way back down. Now, there's nothing wrong with muscles, but there's something wrong with pride. God hates pride. Same thing happens when the boys turn 14 or 15 and they finally get that first hair to grow on their chest. They're so proud of it. They always leave their shirt unbuttoned way down to here. They got a little hairspray, a little ribbon tied around it, and the sign says, Hair. It's 40 below zero. They're walking around outside, you know. Somebody says, Aren't you cold? Says, I'm, I'm freezing. Well, button your shirt. Oh, man, if I button my shirt, they wouldn't see. Uh, they wouldn't see what? This hair right here. See this thing? Oh, here, I'll get it for you. <laughs> oh, you just wrecked this whole life, man. He's been working 14 years trying to grow that thing. You yanked it out of roots and all. I remember when I was going to college, Midwestern Baptist College, Dr. Tom Malone, Pontiac, Michigan. A bunch of the guys in the school decided, hey, let's grow a mustache. Kind of a fad, you know. We get around in the dorm, hey, you going to grow a mustache? Yeah, I'll do it if you will. Okay, I'll do it. You're going to do it? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. So we all decided we're going to grow a mustache. I let both hairs grow for a while. And uh, Dr. Malone got up in chapel one day and said, okay, students, we're going to have a new rule at the school. I thought, just what we need, another new rule. He said, no more mustaches on the men, or the women for that matter. <laughs> and then he said something I couldn't believe he said it publicly. I was so embarrassed by what he said next. I would never repeat what he said. He said, I don't understand why you fellows want to cultivate something under your nose that grows wild under your arm. <laughs> so, I went back to the dormitory, picked up my seldom used razor, took one last longing look in the mirror, and shaved both of them off, <laughs> watched them go down the drain. One of the guys across the hall in the dormitory got mad because of the new rule and quit school. Refused to shave his mustache. Now listen, listen, listen. There's nothing wrong with the mustache. There's nothing wrong with the beard. But there's something wrong with pride. God hates pride. It's the pride God hates. Not the hair. The Bible says there's four things that cause pride. first one is power. Ezekiel 28, verse 3 and 4 says, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel, with thy wisdom and with thine understanding thou hast gotten thee riches. Oh, wisdom and riches. Money. Two more things that cause pride. You know, what is it about the super smart folks in this world? Not too many of them have a sweet, humble, godly spirit. The kind of attitude like, God, I'll do anything you want. Not too many of the super bodybuilders have that sweet, humble, godly spirit. Nothing wrong with brains. God made brains. And if God made you smart, wonderful. Yay. Use it for Him. But I've noticed in the debates I do at universities, lots of these guys I debate are extremely smart. But it's become their downfall. They're proud, arrogant, cocky. We don't need God. We can explain it by evolution. You Christians are so dumb. That's the way they think. And the atheists drive by this church and think how stupid you are for being here. They have a smarter-than-thou attitude. Nothing wrong with brains, but there's something wrong with pride. The Bible says, With thy wisdom thou hast gotten the riches, and the heart was lifted up because of thy riches. third thing that causes pride is money. Money can cause pride. Now, there's nothing wrong with money, but there's something wrong with pride. And if God gave you lots of money, yay, wonderful, use it for Him. You know, you can see the emotions that money brings when you play Monopoly. How many have ever played Monopoly before? How do you feel when you are winning at Monopoly? Have you ever won at Monopoly? Let's suppose you are winning big time. You own the whole board, except for waterworks. You have $10,000 sitting there. The bank is empty. You have it all. And it's your turn to roll the dice. You have hotels on everything. Are you nervous? No. You get that proud, cocky, I can go any place attitude, and you toss the dice, right? You're not worried you're going to land on waterworks, are you? No, are you kidding? What's it going to be? 20 bucks, 50 bucks, 100, 500, 1000? Here you go, keep the change. 
Now, 